Welcome back everyone. In this video, we will learn how we can work with locator and interact with different elements of a web page. Now here I have put some code that I have covered in a previous video. Uh, here I have imported selenium and service object, created a service object, and uh, creating a driver object then, and then going to this website. If you don't know how this five lines of code works, please go to my previous video and watch it. To understand this mechanism but this is really simple we are creating a new driver object and going to uh, internet Heroku app now you can automate this website but it's we are not really doing anything until this point now from this point forward we will understand how we can interact with the different element of the page I will copy this link here and open that in a new browser I'll use a Chrome because it has a Chrome console is like better than other consoles but if you like to use other browser and consoles you can use that as well uh, but i would suggest if you are a beginner i would suggest to stick with the chrome so i'll go to internet heroku app and we need to go to a chrome console to basically see how this web page is built now before i go into that uh, you need to understand that most of the web pages on a web nowadays are a combination of three things html css and javascript okay there are plenty of resources out, out there which can explain you how the web pages are built so i'm not going to cover those here i'm going to cover core concept about how we can use those html and css locator with selenium to interact with different element of a web page so to interact with it we will need to open a console developer console and to do that you can click on this three ellipses icon go to more tools and select developer tools there is also a shortcut key option command i for mac and you will find similar key shortcut in windows as well so i'll click on that it will open a console here for some time it will open console window on the side here as well or it may open on the other side depending but you always click on the three ellipses again and uh, put it whichever position you like I always like in bottom so I'll move it here we can see the code for this web page and the main content of this page is always inside this body so if I just hover over this body element you can see the entire web page is getting selected if I select this div it will select other element if I select another div it will select a different element and so on let's take an example and I wanted to interact with this I wanted to extract this text welcome to the internet so this is heading tag what I can do is I can click on this arrow and then click on this element you can see there this element is getting highlighted with kind of orange background blue background so I'll click on that and you see here in here it, it brings me to that specific element inside that HTML now this HTML usually it's called document object model so I'll Moving forward, I'll just call it a DOM. Okay. So whenever I talk about DOM, it's like this HTML of the web page. So in here you can see the specific welcome to the internet tags is visible by using this H1 tag, which has a class of heading and this text. Now in here, this H1 is called a tag it's HTML tag similarly the style is a tag here h2 is a tag ul is a tag li is a tag so from you can understand this way very next item that comes after the opening bracket is a tag name and everything after that is an attribute so in specific in this one this h1 is a tag name and the class is called attribute and whatever you see after the equal to sign so here class is equal to heading okay so this heading is called an value so just to reiterate in this h1 tag we have three component here one is a tag name which is h1 the class which is an attribute and class is equal to heading so this heading is a value Okay, so this three attribute. Now we know what this different component are. So let's go to our first locator type. And I'll first cover the X path. 
X path is a type of a locator which using that you can traverse through the DOM up or down and basically you can use those X path locator in your Selenium code to interact with the element itself. And first I will write the code and then explain you how you can create X path for any element. Okay, so to first interact with an element, you will have to use the find element method. Now, previously in Selenium 3, there used to be driver dot find element by XPath full, but in Selenium 4, that method has been a little bit modified. So I'm gonna use the latest syntax here. So to do that, you can say driver dot find element, and here you have to pass by and since this by will need, most probably need to import this thing and to import that you can say from selenium not select it has to be from selenium web driver dot common dot by import by and make sure you import this by with the uppercase B because that's what we should be using. And in here you can say by X path and here you can pass your X path locator. So I'm just gonna type my X path locator based on this H1 tag. So my tag is H1 and then here square bracket I'll plus class equal to it says heading and i will save this in a let's call it h1 okay and i'll pr print my h1 now this will not give us actual text it will give us the web element but i wanted to show you that this is a this is how you can grab the web element itself so what i'll do here is i'll close this uh, i'll i'll go to the console and run my code again and actually I'm running a wrong file here so I'll clear it and because my file name is part 3 so I'll run that one python part, part 3 dot pi and I'll keep my browser and you see here it's printed something this is this is some gibberish text but that is not gibberish it actually says it says selenium dot web driver dot remote dot web element so this is essentially what happened here is it opened a new browser went to internet heroku app it found this h1 element and we just printed it now it doesn't it look like gibberish text to us now we have this element so instead of printing element itself we will print what text it's contained so i'll add dot text method here and if I go to that website again here you see it has a text of welcome to the internet. So it should give us this exact text when we run our code next time since I have added dot text method. So let me close the other automated open browser here first and go to the console, clear it and rerun our code one more time. And you can see here we got the text exactly welcome to the internet. This is how you can use the X path and interact with the specific element. Before we wrap up here, let's understand anatomy of this X path that I have used here. And you can create any kind of X path using this generic method. So I'll first put it here as a comment. This is our X path and general anatomy of any X path is here. You can put forward slashes then you have to write a tag name then bracket and in here you will need to first pass an attribute and it should be equal to here in a quote you have to pass a value okay so this is exactly like how it appears in the tag itself this part so here you can see class equal to heading and you can see we have the same thing if i go to this browser we have class equal to heading okay so this is how you can pass forward slashes tag name 
at the rate attribute and a value and you can use any attribute if it is at id you can use id equal to whatever id you have uh, if your tag name is like dev you can use that dev there and create it like dev which has id equal to anything which has like xyz value right so if you have the specific div it will give you div which has id of xyz right and that way you can essentially uh, create any xpath so i'll put down a general syntax here one more time it's a uh, forward slash tag name here at the rate attribute equal to value so you can use this syntax and create xpath for any element now we looked at the x path this is one of the common method right there are like five or six different ways you can use it now let's look at another one it's called a css selector okay so to use the css selector you can use the same syntax css selector has little bit of different syntax so i'll just put a comment here x path and the syntax for css selector is tag name here attribute equal to value so in here we are omitting the forward slashes and at the rate and if once you do that it becomes the css selector now this is very simple way there are different ways you can create the css css selector and we will cover some of those method as we move forward in this video series but for now just remember this common method so you at least have a fundamental to understand that how you can use the x path versus the css selector so i'll use the actually you know i'll use the css selector with the same element so you'll understand how we can grab a same element with the different locator methods so here i'll use the same heading i'll instead of my calling it here x path i'll call it css selector and let me put a space here and what i'll need to do i'll remove this two forward slashes at the red and now it becomes css selector so if i go to my console right it should not do anything special it should just give us a same result welcome to the internet heading and i'll rerun my code open a browser went to internet app and you can see here we are getting the output welcome to the internet and again this is the same thing but using a different method previously we were using the x path now we are using the css selector so that's how you can use the x path and css selector to extract uh, basically target different html component now i'm just showing you how selector work there are different ways different methods you can use you can send tags you can send keys you can interact with uh, it in a different way if it is a pick list you can select a specific pick list basically you can do all kind of actions that you do as a user using a keyboard and a mouse you can automate most of those action using the selenium that's why it's called automated testing right you just want it to simulate the human behavior using some kind of automation and that's what selenium let you do that so we will see those different method but first you need to understand some of the basic concept how you can interact with the different html elements so in this video we have covered two important locator type xpath css selector i'll also cover the class name because that is also one of the common selector that is used so to do that let's use another website so we can uh, have some difference i'll use the selenium developer website let's try to open that and selenium it's called selenium.dev and in here let's see if this specific button has any class so again you go to the website click on this arrow and click on very specific element that you want to target so I'll, if i click here it looks like it's a e tag basically anchor tag and it is wrapped under this div selenium button container so let's target this selenium button container class okay 
So what I wanted to do, I wanted to target this specific div using this class name. Okay, so again, you can hear uh, using our method that I showed previously, you can use XPath using this method, you can use a CSX selector using this method, or you can use third method, which is called class name. So I'll use class name method here. And here, since we are using class name, simply what you need to do is copy this entire class name, whatever you have uh, between this quotes after the equal to sign for the class, copy it and use that as a locator. Now, important thing to remember, we are using a class name here specifically. So if you are copying the different element then it will not work. You have to use the class name only. If it is a different att attribute, for example, uh, it has ID as well as, right? Many HTML tags has class, ID, and other different type of attribute. So it will not work with any other attribute. Always make sure you use the value that is assigned to this class, okay? That's how this method itself says that. Also, this we are on a selenium dev website so we have to go to this web specific website to get it if we run it on internet heroku app it will not work because it doesn't know this locator so i'll just change our website here and now what it will do is it will create a blank browser window go to selenium.dev website try to identify this element and give us uh, and print text of that element so this is again not h1 so i'll say uh, let's just call it a button it's some kind of a button here right because when i inspect this div you can see it's it's essentially a wrapping a button inside and what it should do is since this is a parent element it should give us a text of whatever in it. and in this one you can see only text it has a read mode so it should print read mode read mode in the last line right and again now let's start using our driver dot quit method as well so we don't have to manually close our driver every time this happens so i'll save my code again go back to our console and rerun our file again so again what it will do it will go to selenium.dev it will interact with this html element with this class name take the text out of that print it and then quit the browser so let's run our code. And you can see it was quick, but we got the correct output of read mode. It is working as expected. So now in this one, uh, we don't have any specific syntax for a class name, but we can add a comment. It will only work with class attributes okay so i'll add this as a comment rather than because we don't have any specific syntax i mean there are different ways people define a class because this is kind of a user defined thing uh, if you are using some kind of a css framework then there is some kind you will find some kind of a similarity but again it's a user defined so we don't have any specific syntax only thing you'll need to make sure is you'll copy the exact same thing that appears after the class equal to okay so you have to copy and paste the entire class value from your element html element in here in your code okay so in here now we learn about three important method xpath css selector and class name in the next video we will see uh, other other method which, where we can use the id and the text of the HTML element to target the element. So thanks for watching this one and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.